can't see out the mirrors because of the sun look. We'll get it. Just got low hydraulic oil. I'll just top it up in a minute. to make sure we've got no oil leaks. Oh, it's just shut itself off. Right. Can't see no oil leaks or anything after running it. Just want to give it a good wash. Get it all nice, clean and tidy. Get the hydraulic oil filled up. And uh, yeah, have a good look around it. Got the old jump pack on this combine now. So we'll go up and I'll have a look. Will this one start now with a jump pack on it? Hopefully. Bit of revs. Oh yes. Looking in the mirrors, trying to get it out. We actually used to run three of these combines. I'll show you a picture now, or whichever side of the screen you want it. Um, yeah, we used to run three of them, but obviously as we've had more grassland and um, the more government schemes, we don't need three anymore, so now we just run two. So it was quite cool running three, you get on very quickly, but um, yeah, don't need it anymore. So we're going to get these out, we're going to give them a bit of a wash, a bit of a run through them, we're going to put the headers on as well, so we're going to get the headers out of the shed and uh, give them a run up and just make sure everything's uh, good. dog doing. Stay out of the way dog. Just need to wash it, look, like a bird poo on there. We're gonna go around, we're gonna check the tire pressures, that's quite important. Just leaving it running, just make sure there's get a bit of charge in the battery. And um around and grease it as well. The engine running. It can't go anywhere because it's um, it's hydrostatic drive. So it doesn't have like, a, well it's got a gearbox under here but there's like a hydraulic pump up there that feeds two big pipes which then come down under here. There the pipes are just there and they feed this big gearbox here and these shafts here turn the final drives to drive it. Na, 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 na. Got a fuse box in here. Just make sure that's all alright. Oh no, just wants a bit of a clean out. ECUs, fuses, relays, whatever you want to call it. And then the whole thing is driven off this end hold on it. Whole thing's driven off this shaft up here. That big shaft running there. That's what drives everything. But it's not engaged at the moment. This stops the radiator filling up full of dust. Pre-screener just sits there going round and takes all the stuff off before it goes into the radiator. Wants a bit of a wash up here. Just make sure I've got no hydraulic leaks or anything. So I'm not standing near anything moving because that'll be very silly. You see all the belts moving there. And what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to go in the cab and I'm going to engage the drive, which is that hydraulic little ram there, a little electrolyte ram. It will shove the belt forward and start everything up. I'm just checking for all leaks at the moment. Air cleaner there, we'll clean that out as well. I can't remember if I did it before I put it away or not, so just want to go through everything to check it. I'm going to start it all up first, give it the whole lot of run, so we can have a look. So I'll start it up and I'm going to stop it. I'm not going to go near it when it's running. 
I just want to look around it, make sure there's no belts off, hanging off, or any chains or anything. Are we all good? Start with the unloading auger. Put that out. There it goes in the mirror. It should just come around here like that then. I want to grease that up and everything as well, so we'll open that up. Next thing to do, we're going to start it up. Push that one. Oh, you can hear that. Right. Can't see that very well, can we? Remember, don't go near moving machinery and don't stick your arms in it either. Of a shake look, I need to look at that. This is why you need to do the walk around inspections and that chain's loose. You see it? One's tightening up. Right, we've stopped it now more of the inside that's the bit that separates the corn now the drum they're the drum bearings so we need to grease them let's give it a wash first so we don't want to we don't want to pressure wash it after harvest because all the water sits in the bearings and uh, doesn't do it a lot of good can sit in the electrical bits but we don't wash around any of that bit really as well at least as we can because we don't want water in the electrical bits. So yeah, usually you wash them a week before harvest so that you um, get it all nice and clean and ready. You want to get any straw that's packed anywhere out because if it sits in a bear and the bear and gets hot, it can set on fire. So we like to keep these clean. We blow them out every single day after they've been used. Some people don't, and then they wonder why they've had a fire. Um, always keep a fire extinguisher. <clears throat> make sure the fire extinguishers are all going to be working as well because if you have a fire you've got to put it out quick or else everything sets on fire the field and everything <laughs> oh look that belt one's changing as well oh more jobs to do i'm so happy and you can't get that belt out without taking this one off, look. So you've got to take that one off to get that one off, because that one won't come past that one. What are the others like? That one's all right. Or is that the one that's not very good? Yeah, look at it. Because you don't want that, so you might as well just change it. It's not gone yet, but you might as well just change it, because the last thing you want to do is on a boiling hot day, you're taking this to bits, getting covered in muck and grease. Look how much cleaner it is when all the dirt's off of it. That means we can, we'll probably get a bit of, change the diesel filters on it as well. And I don't want to be crawling around in all the mud. So we'll, we'll give it a bit of a good clean up here. Won't go too ridiculous around all the wiring and that, but we want to make sure there's no dust sat on top of the engine or in the turbo where it could catch fire. Look 
how mucky it is. That's from all the dust last year. We'll get it nice and clean now. Wash all the flashing lights, wash all the mirrors so everyone can see. I hate it when you can't see out the mirrors. A little steering valve. Like, look, that little bit of straw there, that wants to come out. Obviously, that can sit there or, you know, don't want it sitting there, really. And don't want it sat outside either, so we'll clear all that out, give it a good wash. Just taking the guard off his chain, have a look at it. Make sure there's no um, a brake. Uh, there's the brakes just there, look, those big cast drums. Want to make sure there's no straw around them, because if they get hot, they'll set it on fire as well. So we're getting the headers out of the shed now. Um, we're going to take them and we're going to put them on, test them. We're probably going to have to do some maintenance on the knife. So we'll pull all the knife out that does the chopping, but that'll be in another video, I suspect. Um, what I used to like to do, I used to, uh, I still do every now and again, do a bit of work for a company called Macdon and they make the uh, headers in Canada and Winnipeg. And they used to, so I'll show you a picture. This is what they are, just here like this. So what I used to like to do, when one of these massive 40 foot headers comes, or 45, 42, or whatever, however big they were, so we're talking more than three times the size of this one. You know, the, these headers that they send into the yard here, they're like fitting the biggest combines in the world. So what I used to like to do, I used to park the header up in the yard, and then my little, well, my little masses compared to these big combines, I'd just nose the front end of the combine up to this massive, massive header, so that when somebody come in the yard, they'd be like, What's that? I'm like, well, that's the combine. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Have you have you ever ne never seen a combine doing a wheelie down the field because it's got the massive header on the front? I just found it quite funny anyway. If anybody from uh, class is watching, class combines, um, I wouldn't say no to a demonstration. I'm not going to buy one. I just want to make a video on one and show everyone how cool it is because I think they're one of the most coolest machines ever. And just incredible bits of kit. So yeah, there's the dog. First thing, put the unloading auger away before we forget about it and drive past the building and tear it off like someone else has done before. That's a way, let's go get the header on. Got the mud on my face now from pressure washing. Put me out on backwards. What's that? Um, I've just started it up again. I'm gonna give the cab a clean out as well. Look, looks a bit dirty. I wanna make sure that's nice and clean. Just giving it a bit of a run now to make sure that there's no water in any of the bearings or any of the chains ready to grease and oil them. So we'll just give it a run for five minutes, just to let it warm up. The next thing we're doing, we're going to put the header on. And it can be quite tricky sometimes. So those two hooks each side have got to line up. The driver, you can't hit the wheel, I've got to lift that up so I don't hit the wheel. And if you don't get it dead right, it won't go on. Oh, look, not slightly, just got to turn to the right slightly. And because it's rear wheel steer, it can make things a lot more trickier. Oh, look at that. Got it first time. So that drive shaft there, push that in. There we go, that's on. And then that, that's that side done. That side locked on, hydraulic pipes. This is for all the hydraulic motors. So blue to blue. Sometimes you usually have like a big quick release that you just pull down like we do on the other tractors, but these haven't got them. We don't really use them that often anyway. You very rarely take these pipes out, only when taking the header on and off, so you don't really, it doesn't really matter. And then that one, so that one's like, that one there will be um, lift the reel up and down. Um, that one there will push the reel in and out. These big ones here, they're actually the flow for the reel to go round. So let's start it up and have a look. So now, using my fingers that are filthy, that one should lift the reel up and down. There we go. Down, that one should be in and out. Oh, that's up and down, sorry. Uh, which one's that one? Reel in and out, look, like that. And then we'll start it up, make sure it goes round, which is That one, then we give it some revs. And 
it's all working. So all we need to do is grease it. Oh, that's the grease gun falling over. Remember, we've got this big, I'm going to say it right this time, Milwaukee, not Makita grease gun. So we're going to, here's the first greasing point on that, like that. So, only on a few, and I did grease it before I put it away, but now I can't get that off. There we go, it's off. So that one there, it goes up this pipe and goes up to do a couple up there that we can't quite reach. So they're out of the way. So there's another one just here, look. It goes up there. Um, there's another one on this shaft here. There's more round here like that. You've, it, it's really difficult to know where all these uh, grease nipples are because um, sometimes you can forget. And you imagine the amount of machines we've got, you've got to tr roughly try and remember where all the grease nipples are, but it's usually not too bad because any part where there's a moving part, you'll usually find a grease nipple unless it's a sealed bearing. This electric one is so much easier. Don't have to stand here and pump it by hand. We don't want to put too much, you see the grease coming out. We don't want to put too much in it because uh, all the muck will stick to it, which is what we don't want. And around the other side, you've also got to remember this one here doesn't actually do much, but it's got like a, um, oh, it's not, a, I don't think it's a, quite a slip clutch. There's like a big spring behind there like that that will open and close, which will change the speed of this drum in here. So what we need to do, we only put like two pumps in it per year. And that's it. Because if we do any more, it's over greasing that one and um, it'll just fill full of muck and stuff. So yeah, usually two or three pumps a year. Might do it end of season. These PTO, uh, the, these joints near, they'll want doing. These chains as well. Might even take them off and change them for new ones, but that's going to be in another video. So we've got loads of stuff to go around here. What's this belt looking like? It's okay, but it's not not amazing. But yeah, we do like to keep on top of everything. So yeah, it's a bit of a minefield trying to remember what does what and everything, but I've done it that long now. You just sort of know off the top of your head what that drives, what that drives, what that does, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Also as well, these nice sections. That one's all right, look. See that one's all right, whereas that one's a bit warm. See the difference? So I've got to pull the nice section out. So you just undo this and then just slide the whole thing out and then re-rivet new sections of knife in as well. But we'll do that, um, we'll do that next week when I'm uh, not as busy. So on the other combine that we haven't washed yet, it was a little bit low on hydraulic oil. So we'll just get that in there. This hydraulic oil is a little bit, a little bit different because it can cope with a higher temperature. Right, I'm spilling it now. Good job I'm going to wash it, isn't it? Just check the gauge. Right, it's on the min now, so we want a little bit more so it brings it up to this maximum mark. So only probably one once another five or six litres. Let's have a look at that air cleaner. Turn this wing nut on the end here. These want blowing out every single day of the week because it is in a very dusty and mucky environment and the engine wants to be running as well as it can. Oh yeah, it is a bit mucky, look. I'll get it over and get it on the wash bay. Massive air filter, aren't they? Uh, down here, we've got the engine oil filter. Agco engine oil filter. We won't do the engine all this year because we did it last year and because it doesn't do massive amount of hours because it sits in the shed for like 10 11 months of the year there's no point diesel filters are just here undo these two on the top here and then they pull off we'll put another couple of them on for you know for the pence what they are it doesn't cost a lot and you've got to keep the radiators clean as well so in here got to make sure that right oh look you can see look there's a bit of muck in the top of the radiator and down the sides there, we need to get all that out so that the engine stays cool. Because if that gets blocked up, the engine overheats. And then if you don't stop it before it overheats, well, if the sensors go off, it'll stop it for you. But if you keep cancelling it, the engine will get too hot and it'll just knacker it. Do you remember in yesterday's video? All the net wrap that's wrapped around the roller. Hello, dog. It's been dumped outside the workshop and everyone keeps walking past it because no one wants to do it. So hopefully, if I keep walking past it, somebody else will do it. Local tyre company, they come round once a month 
and we go around all the tyres and make sure everything's at the right PSI because uh, if you run like low PSI tyres they can get very very hot and then burst so we always make sure everything's done so they've come up now we're going around all the combines we're going around all the tractors we're going around all the grain trailers you know they all need to pump it up to the right PSI so as soon as we're ready to go we can just go get on don't pull the trailer out the shed oh look that tyres are flat we'll have to do that everything's done everything's ready to go just been around this one you know how much pressure to put in them usually. Oh, here's my two pound stick I've been using. Very, very good piece of kit. Um, it will tell you here what we need in them or on the side of the tire, you know, cause over winter they could probably lose 10 PSI. And that makes a big difference when you've got a header on the front and the grain tank's full and I'm sat in it. There could be a lot of pressure on that tire. So we need to make sure they're at exactly the right pressure. So there we have it. Bit of work on a Sunday. Not going to do anything else for the rest of the day. Just wanted to get a bit of a head start for next week. Got a lot on. Always got a lot on to do. Thank you very much for everyone who comments. Um, or everyone who's been commenting on the last video saying they're really enjoying the videos. Which motivate, which motivates me to do a few more of them. Because usually I'm like, do people really want to watch this? Do I really want to film this? I never really know. But obviously as you engage and bring the comments and like the videos... It makes me want to make more of them so i don't mind making them i'm not really interested in what some of these people are they like putting videos out every single day of the week i don't want to be doing that i haven't got time for that i just want to show easy stuff what i do day to day people are always like oh you got to upload it at, you know a certain time not interested in that as soon as i've got a video i just chuck it online that's the end of it job done so yeah nice and easy everything what i do <clears throat> you know it's all genuine i like to show everything nothing's fake very easy to do I show it as it happens. I don't make things up. And I try to have a bit of a laugh as well, you know, make things uh, make things more enjoyable. So, yeah, let me know what you think of this one, and uh, I'll see you all soon. Cheers. Just watch that video back. You could have told me I had something there. Right, see you later.